Hey, welcome back you guys. Today I'm going to show you how to join a corner bead. Now if you don't get this right, it can really look like garbage because number one, it will crack right here and you'll always have this little one inch line that keeps reappearing right there. Or the second thing that can happen is if you just follow the new wall when you're joining these two things, it can wind up totally dog-legged. Like if I were to just install this one like this, we can see that it doesn't line up. You can see there's like a quarter inch of space at the top of the level, or if we go down like this, that it's just not gonna line up. So you'll look at that and it'll be visually not straight. So today I'll show you the most effective way to tackle this. So if you don't have to do much build out, you can install this with regular mud. However, in this case, because on one part of it, I'm gonna have to pull the bead out about a quarter of an inch, I'm gonna need to use quick set. The reason is quick set doesn't shrink so when you use quick set, the bead's not gonna move from where you put it. Whereas if you use a regular all-purpose mud, it's very possible that in the shrinking and drying process, that corner bead is not gonna wind up where you put it. Because as it shrinks, it pulls it out of place. So this is 20 minute mud. If you're new, I definitely recommend using more like 45 or 90 minute mud. For corner beads, I like it kinda on the wetter side. So one thing I forgot to mention is that when you're going up to the old bead, it helps to scrape all this stuff off because we're going to add a little tape right here and that's what's going to stop that little one inch crack from showing up down the road. But obviously if you put a tape on here without scraping some of this excess mud away, you're going to create a big hump here. So it's super important to scrape a little bit of mud away from the existing corner bead. This is a glazier's bar or beekeeper's tool. I've heard it called that too. You can also use a paint scraper. It works really well. So when we take a straight edge here and we're doing this not to check if it's plumb, but to make sure that the bead goes on straight, we can see that there's like a quarter inch of light there at least. That's why we need quick set. So we are going to add a lot of mud on here because we know that this side needs a ton of buildup. I already checked the other side. It doesn't need as much. But yep, the more the merrier for this side. This side is a more reasonable amount to build up. And I gotta work quick here because I don't want this setting up on me. Okay, so we are going to line that up. And I'm just sort of getting the flange pressed down like I would on a normal corner bead install. So most important right now is that we line this up and now what we're going to do is, to the best of our ability, we're gonna line this up. So that's actually not too bad. I could probably go with that right there. I got a bit of light up here at the top, but that's okay. This bead was installed kind of crooked to begin with. So we're going with that to some degree. Let's check the other side. So when we check this side, we can see that it's lining up really well. Because I like where it is, I'm going to start gently wiping out this bead. Hmm, concrete in the mud, why not? So I'm being careful not to actually push on the metal of the bead because I like where it is. Don't wanna change it. Okay, other side. Okay, first I'm going to install this tape. You could use fiber tape for this if you want. It wouldn't be the end of the world. I kind of like paper tape for this sort of thing. And I'm going almost up to the edge. See, there's the nosing. We don't want to go past the nosing. And I do actually want to wipe this out kind of tight without taking all of the mud out. So that's good enough right there. Okay, on this side, I'm going to use a paper tape to do the same thing. Again, we're going right up just until it covers it. So it is starting to set up on me right now as I'm working. It 
if you're not experienced, I wouldn't recommend using the mud as it's setting up. It makes it harder to get it out from underneath. And the bond might not be as good. So really quickly now, let's check this to make sure that it looks reasonably straight. So that's pretty good. Considering what we had to work with, that's really good. Check the other side. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Okay, now with this mud that's kicking off, I'm gonna just start loading this bead. Now you wanna be careful because if it's like super kicking off, you don't wanna start just pushing this stuff on here too hard because it's gonna push the bead around. So I'm being gentle. But if your mud hadn't kicked off yet, I would definitely recommend filling it at this stage because once this is set, this bead will not change its position, which is what the benefit, again, of using quick set is. And this one we know is such a deep fill. I may as well get some of this stuff on here. Doesn't have to be pretty, I just need it out of my pan and onto the wall. I don't wanna take that off there because I still haven't taped that joint. All right, that's good. That's a good start. I mean, that's more or less it, but we may as well see another coat on it. Okay, now that I got this tape, we'll just quickly put another coat over top of this with this second batch of mud before it kicks off. Quickset is a wonderful thing. 3 8 inch, half inch deep fills, doesn't matter. Quick set can handle it. Or hot mud, as they call it in the States. That's probably good enough on that side. out where you got the joint. So that's about it you guys. Right now there's two coats. We're gonna do one more coat of all-purpose mud at least, but you can see it looks nice and straight and we've got that tape under there that's now well hidden. That's gonna stop it from cracking down the road. So those are your two major concerns again is that little one inch crack or having it go dog-legged. I've seen both and it happens a lot, especially like when you're doing a two foot cutout. So that's when you have like water damage in a house or something or a basement and they cut two feet of wall out and then they end up having to do all these joints, uh, two foot joints on the corner beads. So this is how you do it. You could also do it with steel corner bead. And the main thing is when you're nailing it on, make sure that you use a level to make sure that it's straight. So a steel corner bead is also an effective way to do it. I just like doing it this way because I'm more efficient w installing tape on corner beads. Anyways, you guys, yeah, there it is. Looking good on that side. Looking really good on that side too. So that'll be a totally seamless repair. And I'm really glad I finally got the opportunity to make this video because I've been asked about it tons of times in the comments. So now we have it. I hope you guys are doing awesome. I hope your project's going really well, but I hope you're doing even better. Till the next one, you guys. Thanks for watching.